the next thing that we have to discuss is the soil water so soil water soil water are again divided in multiple types the very first type here is the gravitational soil water so this is free from the water which is held loosely in the soil so this water could be easily lost by the gravitational force majorly these are seen in the soil macro pores suppose when the good amount of moisture is present in the soil and water here is flowing in the surface of soil so here the water will come down and percolate here or leach down here in these different soil layers the spaces between these different soil layers or the soil particles so here the water you can see is automatically going down without any requirement of any force and the force which is working out here is the gravity itself so you don't need to provide any external force and automatically the water will go down and down that type of water is called as gravitational water and majorly these can be seen in the macro pores macro pores present in the soil so this is the first type of the soil water the second type of soil water that you can find out in the soil layer is the capillary water so it is the water that is contained in the micro pores of the soil so here this is not in the macro pores these are in the micro pores a small pores of the soil and in the soil pore spaces precisely these water which composes the soil solution is loosely held around the particles of soil this form of water is mostly available water for the made available to the plants for their utilization so here we have the micro pores also and in these micro pores or the small small pores the water is present and that water is capillary water this water is held enough so it cannot be moved down with the help of gravity and but but this same time the water is not that much strongly held so you cannot remove it or the plants cannot remove it so plant absorb these water for their growth and development and any a uh, plant can detach this water from the soil layer easily so this is known as the capillary water capillary water is the most important type of water which is utilized by the plants then we have the hygroscopic type of water this form of water makes for a fine film wrapping particles of water and is typically not readily available to plants it is found not only in pores but also on the surface of the soil particles these are tightly held in the soil and cannot be eliminated except for oven drying for 105 degree or 120 degree and 20 degree 24 hours and then 5 degree maybe more than 24 hours you will need so here you can see the water is present just as a thin layer above the soil layer here and this cannot be removed easily from the soil particles because it is very strongly held so this water cannot be used by the plants as well and even human beings cannot remove it until or unless if you oven dry the soil for the 105 degree celsius more than 24 hours of time then only every hygroscopic water will go away so here that is the third type of water which is very strongly held so we have three types of water here gravitational water we have capillary water we have and then hygroscopic water we have so the gravitational water easily go away with the help of gravitation capillary water capillary water is the water which is used by the plants and which is generally held in the micro pores of the soil and then we have the hygroscopic water hygroscopic water is the water which is very tightly held by the soil particles and it cannot be utilized by the plants as well so this is all the three types of soil water then we have the different soil moisture states or the different soil moisture conditions so in this concept the maximum amount of water that can be stored inside the voids of the soil even including the gravity water that is called as the saturation capacity so that amount of water which is in the maximized amount can be held with the help of soil surface or with the help of soil volume including all the pores including all the mediums or whatever space is left there so if it is all filled with the water that is the saturation capacity of that soil the amount of water held or retained on the soil after excess water has been drained suppose this is the container you have and in this container you have soil filled this is the soil we have and above this soil you have good amount of plenty of water and this particular container is now fully packed by the downside 
so now because excess amount of water is present here so soil would be in saturation zone all the pores and the spaces available here is completely filled then here suppose the excess water is removed and this downside layer is also removed but removed in a such a way suppose there is a mess here or the sieve here and in this condition only water can go down so all the water which is present in excess amount will go down from the upside as well as from the downside then the soil condition which is present here that is not in the saturation but that is not completely dry as well because few amount of water can be held in the soil easily so that amount of water here is the filled capacity of that water or the filled capacity of that particular soil layer which is completely drained with the help of gravitational pull but that is not completely dry as well so few amount of water is already held here with the help of the what soil water holding capacity here so this is the filled capacity of the water then we have the permanent building point the water content in which plant no longer available to extract water from soil so all the capillary water is supposed gone away because of the maybe absorbance of the plant maybe non availability of the water whatever the scenario so that exact point where the plant cannot take the water from the soil so that point is called as the permanent wilting point so this is the critical layer or critical point where the soil's moisture completely depleted for the plants available then we have the available moisture it is the available water content which plant can easily extract from the soil for their growth it is difference between the filled capacity and the permanent wilting point so if i remove the filled capacity from this permanent wilting point so whatever amount is left here that is the available water for the plant because below the uh, permanent wilting point the plant cannot absorb the water and more than filled capacity is free water so that will go away that is also unutilized by the plant the plant will only utilize the water between the filled capacity and permanent wilting point and that in between these points whatever amount of water is available for the plant growth that is called as the available moisture of the soil surface so hope that is clear to you all now and we can move ahead then soil air we have to discuss soil organic matter we have discussed soil water we have discussed soil inorganic material we will discuss in the coming slide this is about the soil air so in the soil air we have the n2 o2 and co2 mainly soil air you can see the atmospheric percentage that is 79 20.9 and 0.03 but in the condition of soil air the nitrogen availability is almost same that is 79.2 oxygen available in little less amount 20.6% and carbon dioxide value is very high it is go up to 0.25% the reason behind this is very simple the presence of the aerobic kind of microorganisms which is continuously just uh, using the oxygen present in the soil surface and using that oxygen for the creation of the carbon dioxide by the respiration process and that's why here the, in the soil air the percentage value carbon dioxide is highest here this is the percentage amount of the elements present in the all different types of fertilizer so these are the nitrogenous fertilizer then we have the ammonium fertilizers here ammonical nitrate form of the fertilizers then we have the amide form of the fertilizers available here as well so these all are the different nitrogenic fertilizers similarly we have the phosphatic fertilizers what you have to do you have to remember the value of the nutrient content present in these fertilizers there is no need of remembering the remarks only you have to remember these values in sodium nitrate nitrogen is present in 16% in calcium nitrate nitrogen is present in 15.5% and similarly so on so on so on the few very important fertilizers are i am listing here which are very important which you should remember at any how that is the urea the water soluble phosphate single super, single double and triple if you remember any one of them the values you have to just double and triple then we have here 
the highest amount of fertilizer nitrogen you can find out in the anhydrous use anhydrous ammonia so these are the few very important nutrients or the fertilizers the value of nutrient you have to remember that and it would be very good if you can remember all the fertilizers value fertilizers their nutrient content value in the percent form so it would be very good for you sometimes in the examination sometimes very few times they ask about the two fertilizer value i am including it here because it is in the part of this syllabus so that says that is why i have uh, included this particular slide here but if you can't so remember only the water soluble and this urea and anhydrous ammonia at least you should remember that then we have the bio fertilizers as well bio fertilizers are divided in multiple types one type of bio fertilizer we have that is bacterial so in the bacterial we have the nitrogen fixers nitrogen fixers are also of multiple types like symbiotic in the symbiotic we have the example of rhizobium here then associative associative means which is a kind of associate kind of relationship it is creating with any other organism so that is the azoospirillum we have then non symbiotic so which is free living you can say free living examples are azetobacter and acetobacter both examples are very important all the examples are important here i will tell you then we have the phosphate solubilizer type of bacteria which is non symbiotic these are the bacillus and pseudomonas these are the free living phosphates of solubilizer bacteria these are again free living why i am writing free living because sometimes in the examination they ask like this which one of the following is a free living type of phosphate solubilizer or free living type of nitrogen fixer the examples are in your screen right now then we have algal type of n2 fixer in non symbiotic we have the blue green algae bga which is uh, creating non symbiotic type of relation again it is a kind of free living you can say which can do the photosynthesis in algae then we have the symbiotic type of relation as well that is the azola azola and azorespirillum both live together and they are associative type of or symbiotic type of relationship create there then we have the phosphate solubilizer that is non symbiotic that is the aspergillus penicillium and trichoderma and then we have the nutrient mobilizer symbiotic which is vascular or vascular mycorrhiza which helps to the solute solubilizing the nutrients or mobilize the nutrients in the soil layer that is in the biofertilizer 